Hi, this video is to show you how to type some of the statistical symbols we need and also how to type math equations. So part 1c had us come up with the mean, the standard deviation, and the five number summary. And I have the mean and standard deviation here and one of the numbers from the five number summary. Make sure you get all five in yours. And then part d asks us to label the mean and standard deviation with the appropriate symbols. So the first thing and thinking about that is thinking about do we have a sample or a population and if you read through this problem it says to assume that we're working with population data so even though this just says it's the mean we know it's the population mean so the symbol for that would be mu and we need to find that so that's a Greek letter and the easiest way to get that is to go to insert and equation and that'll pop up this little box that we can work in to type our equation and part of the equation editor in Google Docs is Greek letters. So we're going to do mu. And it looks like the mu is right there. But we have some other stuff that will be useful later. There's the sigma that we would need for population standard deviation. If we were doing a sum, then we've got the capital Greek letter sigma. And all the letters are there. If you needed a pi for some reason, you know, there it is and so on. Later on, we'll use alpha. So some of these will come up in later places. So it's nice to have all the Greek letters there. So on this one we want mu, and then I'll just type an equal sign, and then there's our mean, so 156.45455. And then the standard deviation, we need the Greek symbol for the population standard deviation, and that would be sigma. Go back to the same spot, find your sigma, put your equal sign, and 100.86477. This isn't a real big deal to me here, but it, I would imagine these have been rounded. And if they've been rounded, we brought in error. So instead of putting the equal sign, we could put an approximately equal. Let's see if I can find that for you real quick. I don't use this particular equation editor all the time. I usually use the one in Microsoft Word. But you, can use, you want a wavy equal sign for approximately equal. So there it is right there. So we could do that for both of those. That would be a more accurate way to put that. I don't usually worry about that too much when you're typing, but when you handwrite it, I like you to put that when you're round, so it'd be a good habit to do it even when you're typing. But either way is okay, but it's nice to know how to do these things if you want to. All right, so there we go. We've labeled the mean and standard deviation using the appropriate symbols. And then in part 1F, you do some sorting of the data, and it asks you to then take w one of the quartiles and do it by hand. And it asks you to do that for Q3. I'm going to go ahead and show you the typing for Q1 because I don't want to just do the answer directly for you, but it's very similar typing for Q3. This is more about how to type the stuff than what the answer is. So uh, when you're doing an equation or you need an equation in a tech project, you have two options. I don't mind if you print out your project and then handwrite it. The other option is to do a good job with the equation using an equation editor. I do not want you to fake the symbols with just kind of regular type keys. So either handwrite it so it looks like real math or use an equation editor so it looks like real math. So if I was going to find Q1, the first thing would be to do the location. So I'll click on new equation uh, or you could do insert equation. Either one should work. And then we want a capital L with a subscript of Q1. So for subscripts, go into the math operators here and there's a subscript. So when you click on that, you don't see anything, which is I think a flaw of Google Docs, but there's a lower part and an upper part to this. And you just gotta kinda click around to find them. So since I'm actually in the lower part, I can kinda see that by the way that's flashing right now. I'm gonna type the Q1. And then now that I can see that, I'm going to try and click to the left and see if I can get into the upper. Sometimes you can do that with the arrow keys. There we go. I used the left arrow, and that brought me up into the regular non-subscript part. So I have the location of Q1. You can actually do a subscript of a subscript to make that one a little lower, but it's pretty tricky, so I'm not going to worry about that. And then equals, and for location, we do a fraction. So you've got fractions right here. So you click on that, it should show you the fraction bar. And in the top, you want, let's see, we're going to go for Q1. So we want 1 fourth. 
So I can click in the top and click down into the bottom. Let's see if I can use arrows to move around there. In Microsoft Word, they show you the boxes, which is a little bit nicer. There, I finally clicked in it. So you know what you're aiming for. Here, they don't do that. That fraction bar is not super big. I don't mind that, but if you want it to be bigger, if you do a space in front of one of the numbers and a space after it, it'll make the fraction bigger to accommodate those spaces. Make sure that the cursor gets out of the bottom and over to the side. Sometimes this clicking can be a little maddening on here. But I need to put parentheses and the n plus 1 part. And let's see, I'm just going to try and type and see what happens. Yeah, I'm still in the denominator. Arrow key is not cooperating with me too much. Try to the right. I can't see where the cursor is, but I'm going to try parentheses. Yeah, there we go. So I use right arrow to get out of the denominator. And then on this particular problem, we have 22 pieces of data. So we want to do 22 plus 1. And then see what that would be equal to. And let's see. I don't have my calculator handy. But I believe that will be 5.75. And that's where the Q1 is located in between the fifth and the sixth numbers. So I told you guys in class you should then not use an equals, but like an implies. So those are here in your arrows. That implies that Q1, that's another subscript thing. So where have we got that? Subscripts right here. So that implies that Q1, use the right arrow to move down instead of clicking. Right arrow again pops me back up. Equals, and then we would have another fraction. And I don't have the data in front of me, so I'm just going to write that it would be the fifth number plus the sixth number, and then it's an average. So divided by 2, and use my right arrows to get out of there, equals, and then I would put the answer. But you got to look at the data set to figure out what the fifth and the sixth numbers are to make that work. If you find that any of these fractions look too small, then you should be able to change the font on those. Let me try that. Again, I do this in Word more than here, but if I highlight that, and where's my font size right there? Let's see if we can make that bigger. Seems like they're not going to let us do that. I'm going to try it with just a part. Yeah, those aren't going to grow. So you're stuck with the sizes that you have. But at least the math is typed in a more normal way there. And that can be a pain. So you can look at that and go, oh my goodness, that is not worth it. And you do not have to type your equations. I think it's a handy thing to learn. But you do not have to do it this way. But the other option is not to like fake it with the keyboard, it's to handwrite it. So either handwrite math that looks like this with subscripts and parentheses and proper fractions with horizontal fraction bars, or type it using the equation, equation editor. Either way is okay with me. Typing it's a little better for sharing it electronically with your partners. If you handwrite it, you're going to do it at the end. Sometimes people forget. So I would consider trying this, and then if you don't like it, go to handwriting. But again, no faking it. Um, you know, like I don't want you to type a U instead of a mu. I want you to type the correct thing. Don't type a an O and have the intention to go put a line over it later. Type a sigma. So either handwrite the symbols and the equations correctly or type them in the way that I just showed you and then go ahead and continue this project on. All right, that's it for this video.